Something just changed with 3i Atlas today, and even NASA wasn't ready for this. For weeks, everyone's been saying it's weird, but it's just a comet. Scientists have been tracking it, observing it, measuring it from every possible angle. Sure, it came from another star system. Yes, it's behaving a little strangely. But at the end of the day, the consensus has been that we're looking at a comet. Uh, an unusual one, maybe even a historic one, but still just a comet doing what comets do. But the newest data that dropped today? It's throwing all of that into question. Because it looks like 3i Atlas is changing faster than any of the models predicted. And when I say faster, I don't mean slightly off from expectations. I mean dramatically, noticeably, undeniably faster than what our best simulation said should be happening at this stage of its journey. Here's what happened. Over the last few days, NASA's cameras and telescopes have been building a kind of time-lapse of 3i Atlas. They've been capturing image after image, frame after frame, watching this object as it sweeps through our solar system. Same object, same orbit, same basic geometry. Every observation should show gradual predictable changes as it responds to the increasing heat and radiation from our sun. But today's frames don't match what we saw even 48 hours ago. And that's not normal. That's not how comets typically behave. The first thing that jumped out to the teams analyzing the data was the coma. Now, if you're not familiar, the coma is that glowing cloud of gas and dust that surrounds the solid nucleus of a comet. It's what makes comets look fuzzy and bright in the sky. Up until now, the coma around 3i Atlas has been pretty smooth and predictable. Bright in the center where the nucleus sits, then fading out gradually in all directions. It's been textbook, classic comet profile, exactly what you'd expect to see. In the new images from today, that symmetry is completely gone. Instead of a soft, round glow radiating evenly outward, the coma has developed distinct structure. You can literally see bright arcs and knots forming on one side of the nucleus, concentrated in just one area. It's like someone turned up the activity dial in just one hemisphere and left the other side almost completely untouched. The contrast is stark and unmistakable. It's as if the comet suddenly switched on a jet, a powerful stream of gas and dust venting from its surface that wasn't active before, or at least wasn't nearly this active. And that alone would be interesting. Comets do develop jets. They do have active regions. That's part of their normal behavior as they warm up approaching the sun. But the really strange part the part that has astronomers genuinely puzzled is how quickly it happened. Comet activity usually ramps up gradually over days or weeks as the object gets closer to the sun and the solar radiation intensifies. The heat penetrates deeper into the icy nucleus, sublimating more material, increasing the pressure until vents open up and gas starts streaming out. It's a process. It takes time. In this case, the change shows up between image sets separated by just hours. Think about that. One sequence, taken in the morning, shows a relatively calm, even coma. Nothing unusual. Nothing alarming. Just a comet being a comet. The next sequence, captured later the same day, shows a lopsided, noticeably brighter, more aggressive side facing, slightly off the sun comet line. That kind of rapid shift means something on or inside the nucleus changed fast, really fast. Faster than thermal models would predict for an object of this size at this distance from the sun. Now look at the tail, because that's where things get even stranger. Earlier images from just a couple days ago showed a tidy, stable tail. You know what a comet tail looks like. That beautiful streaming trail of dust and gas flowing away from the sun, pushed by solar radiation and the solar wind. 3i Atlas had exactly that. Clean, straight, predictable, dust and gas flowing away from the sun like you'd expect from any normal comet. But in today's frames, 
The tail doesn't just get longer as the comet releases more material. It bends. And not subtly. In the latest view, the tail appears kinked. Almost like there's a hinge or a pivot point in the flow. The base of the tail, closest to the nucleus, points in one direction. But then a few hundred thousand kilometers out, maybe a quarter of the way to the moon's distance from Earth, it curves sharply off axis. It's like watching a stream of smoke that was rising straight up, then suddenly hit a sideways blast of wind and got pushed to the side. Except space doesn't have wind like that, not in the way we think of wind on Earth. The solar wind, that constant stream of charged particles flowing out from the sun, hasn't spiked. Scientists have checked. There's no major solar flare recorded in the time frame when this kink appeared. No big coronal mass ejection. No unusual burst of activity from the sun. Nothing obvious in the space weather data that should have kicked the tail sideways this hard, this quickly. So if the environment around the comet didn't change significantly, if there's no external force we can point to that would cause this, then the explanation has to be coming from the comet itself? Something internal. Something about what 3i Atlas is doing, or what's happening to it. One idea that astronomers are quietly floating, discussing in emails and video calls, is that 3i Atlas might be in the middle of a rotation shift. Comets spin, sometimes in complex tumbling motions rather than smooth rotations. If the nucleus is tumbling or if its spin rate is changing, maybe slowing down or speeding up due to the jets themselves creating torque, then the direction of its active vents can swing dramatically in and out of view. Turn one big jet just a few degrees relative to the sun, change which side is facing our telescopes, and suddenly, the tail can appear to bend, split, or even fork as different jets contribute material at different angles. The overall flow pattern changes. What looks like one coherent tail might actually be multiple streams merging and separating as the nucleus rotates. That could explain why we're seeing this sharp, almost broken back tail shape today, instead of the clean, single line we saw before. But there's a catch, and it's an important one. When you change the way a comet vents, when jets turn on or off, or change direction, you change the forces acting on it. Those jets don't just make pretty tails for us to photograph. They push. Every molecule of gas that escapes the nucleus carries momentum, and that creates thrust, it's weak compared to a rocket engine, but it's real, and over time it can alter a comet's trajectory in measurable ways. And the new tracking data from today suggest exactly that. Orbit fitters, the astronomers who calculate precise trajectories by comparing observations over time, are now comparing yesterday's trajectory with today's updated position. And they're seeing tiny, but real, deviations from the gravity-only path. Nothing dramatic. Nothing that sends 3i Atlas hurtling off somewhere unexpected. But enough to say with confidence, yes, 3i Atlas is now being pushed harder in a slightly different direction than it was just a few days ago. That means two things, and both of them are significant. First, whatever turned on inside this comet, Whatever vent or jet or active region just opened up or intensified, it's strong. Strong enough to not just create visible changes in the coma and tail, but to actually nudge the entire object off its predicted course. Second, if this level of activity continues or increases, the long-term path we thought we knew, the trajectory we've been using to plan future observations, might need another update maybe several updates, and that makes scheduling telescope time, coordinating international observations, and predicting where this thing will be in a week or a month more complicated. Now, here's the part that nobody has a clean answer for yet, and it's what makes 3i Atlas so fascinating and so frustrating at the same time. This object is coming from another star system, it's been traveling through interstellar space for millions, possibly billions of years. Its surface has been bombarded by cosmic rays, 
hit by high-energy particles, exposed to conditions completely different from what comets in our solar system experience. Its ices, the frozen volatiles that make up its nucleus, are not laid out like a fresh, young comet from our own Oort cloud. There could be buried pockets of exotic ices deep inside. Carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, maybe even more volatile compounds, like methane or nitrogen, that don't behave the way we expect when they suddenly get sunlight after spending eons in the frozen dark of interstellar space. These materials have different sublimation temperatures, different vapor pressures. They react to heat in ways that our solar system comets don't always show. If one of those pockets just cracked open, if the warming from the sun finally reached a layer of highly volatile ice that's been sealed away under a crust of more stable material that could trigger exactly this kind of sudden asymmetric outburst. A one-sided coma, a bent tail, a new non-gravitational push that wasn't there before. It would explain the speed of the change. It would explain the asymmetry. It would fit with what we're seeing. But then there's the other possibility, the one people are whispering about in the corners of conferences and in late-night messages between research teams. What if this isn't just random venting? What if there's a pattern we're not seeing yet? Because when you look at today's images side by side, with the ones from yesterday and the day before, the changes don't look entirely chaotic or random. The brightening on that one side of the coma, it looks almost controlled almost deliberate. The kink in the tail isn't messy or diffuse, it's sharp and well-defined, and the timing, the timing lines up almost perfectly with when the object crossed a very specific point in its orbit where solar heating changes quickly, where the intensity of radiation increases in a predictable way. Is that just physics? Just the natural response of ice and rock to changing conditions? Or is there something more systematic going on inside this thing? Something we don't understand yet? Right now, every official statement from NASA, from ESA, from every observatory tracking this object is still calling 3I Atlas a comet. A very weird comet. A very active comet. A very alien comet that doesn't behave quite like our comets, but still natural. Still just a piece of rock and ice doing what pieces of rock and ice do when they get too close to a star. And that's probably true. That's almost certainly true. But the reason today's data has people so on edge, the reason there's this undercurrent of excitement and uncertainty in every conversation, is simple. We've never watched an interstellar object change this fast, in this much detail, from this many different angles, all at once. We've had interstellar visitors before. Oumuamua came through a few years back and confused everyone, but we didn't catch it in time. By the time we knew what it was, it was already leaving. We got blurry images, confusing data, and more questions than answers. This time is different. This time we're ready. We have the Hubble pointing at it. We have ground-based telescopes around the world coordinating observations. We have space-based instruments tracking it continuously. We're seeing it hiccup, flare, bend, and push itself in real time. We're watching its personality emerge day by day. If the activity ramps up again in the next few days, or if we start to see the coma break into multiple brightness peaks, distinct regions of activity that suggest fragmentation, that's going to... Tell us whether this is a single tough nucleus hanging on and out gassing from multiple vents, or whether it's actually a complex cluster of smaller pieces held loosely together, masquerading as one solid object. Either way, the clock is ticking. 3i Atlas is racing through our solar system at tens of kilometers per second. It's not staying. It's just passing through. The window to study these changes to capture these observations, to answer these questions, is short. Every image NASA and other observatories capture today, tomorrow, next week, and the week after is a frame in a once-in-a-lifetime cosmic time-lapse. A documentary we're filming in real time 
about an object that has traveled farther than we can truly comprehend. So here's what I'll say, and I mean this genuinely. Right now, 3i Atlas is changing fast. Faster than anyone expected. Faster than most of our models can comfortably explain. And we're watching it happen live. 